Hi guys and welcome back to another F-Series Friday and today we have got another episode of U-Turn. Finally we've got another one um, and we are joined by the lovely Cassidy from CCF1. Cassidy, thank you so much for joining us. Um, so basically, yeah, I'm just going to quickly describe what U-Turn is. U-Turn is, we say, a statement and we argue whether or not we agree or disagree and then at the end we see if we still agree with our points or disagree with our points and if someone makes a U-Turn then that team sort of sort of wins. So yeah, so let's just go straight in it. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below and you probably already subscribed to Cassidy as well and all her links will be in the description as well. So yeah, today's statement is Nicholas Latifi deserves his F1 seat. Guys, I'm going to throw it to Cassidy first because she's the guest. Do you agree or disagree? I don't think this is going to come as a surprise for anyone that the Canadian is repping the Canadian. I'm in full agreement. He deserves his seat 100%. Okay, Kira. Cassidy, Oh, sorry. I, I'm, I'm going to disagree that Nicholas Satiti does not deserve his seat. Yeah. Steph? I'm sorry. Agree. Oh, that was quick. Okay, Johnny. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be controversial. I'm going to say disagree. Ooh, okay. Um, I'm also going to say disagree at the start. So we've got three disagrees and two agrees. So yeah, Cassidy, I'm going to let you go first and you can argue your first point why you agree and think that Nicholas Latifi deserved his seat. I think this is very timely with the announcement of George leaving to Mercedes. Williams is still a little bit in an in-between period. They're kind of getting some more money coming in. They're still not really stable, but you know what would provide stability? Nicholas Latifi. He's been with the team for a couple of years. At this point, going into new regulations, you want someone that knows the team, that knows the car. It can help build those gradual steps to get them to that next step. I don't think it would make much sense to toss him aside and bring in two brand new people that don't really know how things function around there. Mm, yeah, Steph, I think you I'm have gonna, a bit to oh, go with. Oh, okay. Oh, I was going no, to bat, no, go. bat it away from that. Yeah, you you yeah. bat it. I'll I'll re re bat. All right, we'll you. bat. We'll bat. Um, yeah. So what I was going to bat against that is that you know Nicholas Latifi kind of got the seat. Because, well, he got the seat because of money. You know, he was talented, but he was not talented. You know, so he kind of got that seat on the fact that Williams were very much struggling, and he was the right person at the right time with the right amount of money. And obviously, we've seen that Nicholas has really been outshone with George Russell. But George Russell is kind of that guy anyway. And I think no matter where you are or who you're with, George Russell is going to do that to you. But I'm just looking at, as Cass said, the current situation at Williams, where they have one vacant seat we know, which was George Russell's seat. Obviously, we're filming this only a couple of days before this comes out, but we don't know what has happened. So do apologise if that is now incorrect. But George Russell is now setting off to Mercedes, meaning that there is one seat available. However, Nicholas is still not signed up for next year. You know, there may still be a second seat there. And when you look at the candidates and the other people that probably have more talent than him, I don't see where his place lies in the top 20 best drivers in most sport. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so I'm going to argue um, in terms of kind of how, how much he's improved while being in Formula One already because as you mentioned, George Russell is a very difficult teammate to go up against. Nicholas Latifi has not yet managed to best him in qualifying but he's getting a lot closer. There have been instances in which Nicholas has the race pace and the ability to kind of compete. Um, last year we saw that he was doing better than George was last season he was doing better than George kind of on count back he had more 11th place finishes than George until George you know got got to go to Sakir uh, in driving Mercedes <laughs> so Nicholas was actually kind of beating him throughout that season and all while he hasn't yet beaten George this season well he beat him at the Hungarian GP actually um but George potentially could have over I don't know whose side I'm arguing for right now okay <laughs> Um, <laughs> you're like, well, this the happened, point, but also this happened. So. <laughs> the point that I'm trying to make is that George Russell is an exceptional driver, and it was always going to be difficult for whoever went up against him. But the fact is, Nicholas is getting so much closer in qualifying, um, and he's also really there with the race pace. And I just think as he has continued to improve, he's getting a lot closer to where George is, as George is also improving, um, and would definitely deserve to be 
to have another opportunity to have another year two years to really show what he can do because in reality the machinery of the Williams has not been capable of kind of uh, he hasn't been capable of showing his full potential while the Williams has been such a terrible car so if he could then show his potential next year when the regulations come in and there is potentially you know um, an upgrade for the Williams package then I think that would be a great opportunity and he could really prove what he's made of. I definitely see the point you're making about the fact that he has improved and going against George is such a difficult teammate. George is obviously picked to be like the next world champion so like there is a discrepancy between their like talent levels before you get started but I don't I feel the argument doesn't match up because if they were both in a uh, Red Bull or Mercedes or even even like an Aston Martin Mer- McLaren you wouldn't be given Nicholas this many chances and opportunities to improve and slowly improve and he's getting better and it's taken him <laughs> two years to get on to out qualify George on a Saturday like no it'd be absolutely cutthroat and as Kira said I think Nicholas is he is a good driver but he's not gonna amount to anything um, and I think he did get his seat based on money and the fact or he kept his seat based on kind of lack of potential other drivers who could jump into like I, I think the the academy route like obviously he still oh, what am I trying to say like the there's not fit as at the time for anybody else I guess yeah yeah there wasn't too many candidates that were kind of easy replacements like they are incredibly better than you get out like everyone else was in a different channel like a Ferrari channel or a Red Bull channel so I think he's just he's, he's had his time and he's got maybe a bit of an easy ride into uh into the Formula One. Oh, I feel bad person. I I think it's really difficult because Nicholas as a person is so so lovely and we say this many times about drivers that like are off the track and like in normal life like you'd love 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 them but I just think on the track for me it's just like like what Dawny said like he. Uh, taken so long to out qualify George and I feel like that's only because George, I can't even remember but I feel like George had an issue or something or whatever even if it he didn't it still took him that long um I do think that there's so many other people that could take that Williams seat and now that Williams are improving and they are getting more money the fact that Nicholas did get his seat majority because he had the money it's kind of like they don't need that extra money for a pay driver anymore So what you want to keep? You want to keep him because he's got money, is essentially what you've said. <laughs> no. No, but no, but Doralton have said we now have the finances to financially support ourselves without having a pay driver. They've said that. I still think it'll take a couple more years for that to come into effect, though. That isn't an overnight change, and I'm not. I still think that. Latifi shouldn't be boiled down to solely being a pay driver because he does show those glimmers of hope and how many pay drivers have we had in the past that were 100% forgettable? I don't necessarily think he is because we're seeing that year-over-year improvement. It takes a little while for certain drivers to really come into their own and I kind of think it would almost be a shame that you know now that Williams are finally starting to see their progress to just toss him aside and potentially hope that whoever they bring in next will just kick off where he kind of left it. I I also think that, sorry Kira, um, saying, but like yeah, the fact yeah, that you're saying that he's like there, like he's comfortable with the team, he's been there for that long. Yeah, that's all well and like amazing, but is he still going to carry on improving or is he just going to be stuck there like he is now? Like obviously he is getting closer to George, but... But they could throw in another driver in there, say, I don't know, say Nick DeFries comes in or say Alex Albon comes in. He could go in there and complete. I know this is hypothetical because it might not happen that way. But he could go in there and completely, completely smash it. And I just feel like Nicholas is like at that sort of place where it's just like 
this is how I feel with alpha as well like they're just sort of there like they get sometimes they get good results sometimes they don't it's just sort of there and I I just I just don't know if the way that Williams are progressing right now like as we're seeing I mean George Russell P2 I know it was like a wet race but whatever I just don't know race? if Nicholas it was no race. yeah not a race I just don't know if Nicholas is improving as much as Williams are and especially I, if like other p drivers can come in and just have a fresh mind and go for it I do get your point though that he has been there for so long and knows the team so I do understand that but I just feel like a fresh start would be so good with the, how Williams are going right now I just in contrast to that I think that consistency is key and we've seen it kind of with all right George teams. <laughs> Hashtag. Um, and we've seen it with a lot of other teams on the grid um, that consistency kind of is a, a, a big strength for a lot of teams and there is another seat available at Williams when, I'm not saying you know Nicholas Latifi should have both seats uh, there's some there's <laughs> How's he gonna do that? Max. He's not Max. <laughs> there is room for somebody else to come in and there's room for somebody else to have another opportunity with all of the names that are being floated around who's to say any of them are going to perform better than Nicholas Latifi Nick DeVries who has been linked to the seat yeah fair enough great driver I will rave on about Nick DeVries all the time but he's not driven like a single seater internal combustion engine car since he was driving in f2 so he's been in formula e which is like completely different and a completely different style of driving and even though he has become a really well-rounded driver who knows if he'll end up doing well in formula one and alex alban he struggled he was the exact same as nicholas latifi in comparison to george but he was with max and he just wasn't close enough to him during qualifying so who's to say that alex alban is going to get in that seat and not per perform the exact same that nicholas latifi has i just think going into this new regulations having this fresh start it's an opportunity and if nicola and nicky doesn't do well next year that's fine what well, i can't argue anymore but i definitely think he deserves the new year going into the new regulations we don't know williams could end up completely failing they could still be at the back of the grid or they could end up you know doing amazing and have the fastest car next year and, oh, could you imagine? and then you and then you Poor realize George. okay well nicky shouldn't be in this seat because he's not up to standard but we have no idea how it's going to go for any of the teams next year so to get rid of nicky and say oh he's not good enough but then have the unpredictability of new regulations and two new team members i just think all of that coupled is a disaster for williams waiting to happen I was very passionate there, sorry. <laughs> I'm on that side too because I just think there's no reason necessarily to get rid of him when it's only one year in advance. I don't think we're arguing here that he has to be in the seat for the next 10 years and he's going to be the one and only driver to bring them to the top again. I don't think that's the Speak argument yourself, here. That's what I'm arguing. Okay, I, I'm on board with that if that is the case. But even if it's one year two years just to help that next rising star into that seat to help the team progress even just a little bit year over year i think that'll make more of a difference long term than bringing in two fresh new people to kind of go back to square one i definitely definitely understand that arg argument and like totally understand where you're coming from but what is the question is the question not does nicholas latifi deserve his f1 seat and if you look at it in isolation based on Nick, Nicky's performance and kind of get rid of the outside factors, I don't think he does deserve his F1 seat. And again, it's going back to the fact that he's only got his seat through consequence, which isn't a bad thing. Like, obviously, you take the opportunities you can get. But I just think I can see both sides of this argument because we're arguing, like, slightly different points, if that makes sense. I think also what you just said there, Dawny, also links to what Steph said about Alex, because Alex did lose his seat because of his performances. So if you're comparing Alex and Nikki, that kind of like means that they're on the same sort of level. And if Alex has lost his seat, then and he didn't deserve his seat in Red Bull, then Nikki shouldn't. I, but I like Dawny said. But everyone's said, talking about that Alex still deserves another chance. So why doesn't Nikki just? If we're comparing them, because Nikki's Alex didn't have enough well. time. Nikki has had three years. Alex didn't have Nicky's that. had two no he's only had two years in the Williams and Alex had a year and a half in the Red Bull so it's pretty evenly matched well uh well I guess Nicholas oh, TV's off to, to that guess Nicholas TV's off to DTM then <laughs> <laughs> I'll go going. join Geo <laughs> off you go yeah, yeah. poor Geo I have nothing to say I can't remember Steph's point it went in one ear and out the other 
bit she like was Nicholas saying Latifi's how if career. Alex deserves an extra, if Alex deserves a uh, second chance, why don't Nicky? But personally, I wouldn't put Alex in any seat because I think he's, I don't think he's like should be in it. So. Whoa, God, don't tell Elliot. <laughs> don't tell your boyfriend. <laughs> Hopefully he cannot hear me. From I think it's very room. difficult because I think they're all very different circumstances and everybody is in F1 for a different reason. Even Mazepin and Latifi are two very different situations. So it's very difficult to compare one person to the other. Even when you compare P Pierre and Alex together, that's still two different situations even though they're kind of the same. So I think it's difficult to compare them to that. Um, but I just think looking now, Williams aren't looking in their development pool for this. Um, my camera's going to go. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, Williams are not looking in their driver pool because Dan has been yeeted, Jamie is not ready, do, don't think she's got the super licence, Roy is Roy Dasani and Jack Aiken is too busy doing GT. They're not looking in there, they've, they've not mentioned any of them, um, so I don't really know where they've got that. But if you just think of even somebody in power like Toto Wolff, we know Toto Wolff can place anybody anywhere in Formula 1, like I can't lie to you, that man has a lot of power. So if he goes to Williams and he says, look, you know, I might want to put my Mr. Man Nick DeFries or my Mr. Man Stoffy Woffy in your car. Like, he's going to be like, wow, I've got all this. Sorry, I know I said that. <laughs> I know I said that. Sorry, Stoffy. Um, and Toto just, you know, comes out there with what he's got. That might be it for Nicky, especially when I don't know how to say his name. Jos Capito? I can't say his name. One minute he's saying, we don't need Nikki. Next thing he's saying, I love you, Nikki. So I just don't get the vibes right now, and I don't know whether the. So the the longevity of Nicholas Latifi is going to last, you know? That was a long word for you, Kira. I know, I, I can't believe I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> well, on a more selfish note, I at least want him around for one more year so he can finally get his home Grand Prix. Oh, I'm yeah. devastated that he hasn't had it yet, so that's my own selfish reason. That makes sense. No. Has wants a picture with him in the pit lane. Yeah, she does. I don't blame I him. I saw him. I saw him back in 2019 after he did FP1. He's a very nice Aww. man. Aww. Very nice man. Yeah. I know this is like kind of going off the U-turn topic, but if he was to lose his seat, do you think it would be like any point him looking at a Haas or even a, like a like a because like, I don't think that there's anyone else would take him and that's what and that's what I also think about is like people were sn like Red Bull snapped up Checo I know it took to the end of the season but they still took him like I feel like like I don't I don't know if they, I don't want to sound horrible because I do really like Nicky that's the problem I do really like him but I feel like there isn't if I feel like if he was to lose his seat there wouldn't be a team being like I want you do you know like what I mean? Nicholas, it wouldn't be like, yeah. get Nikki yeah. in my chair, right, in my seat right now. And I think that's also what you look at. Because I just think when Sergio left, everyone was like, oh my God, Sergio deserves a seat. But I feel like if Nikki got announced that he didn't have a seat, I wouldn't see the same sort of reaction. Yeah. If that, if you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. Then again, though, Sergio's been in the sport for around 10 years. So there is no way of knowing yeah. that, say, if Sergio was at risk of losing his seat after two years, if the same reaction would have been the same like he swapped around between different teams but I mean this yeah. is going slightly off topic but even with the rumors of Lawrence Stroll wanting Fernando instead of Seb mm. F1 is run like a business <laughs> ultimately if you're going to be in a position where you're willing to swap out a four-time world champion for a two-time world champion just because you have the money and you can move things around I don't think there are very many drivers on this current grid whose seats are 100% safe and we saw that last year with Checo doesn't necessarily mean that like Nikki is ever going to be one of those drivers where you're confident he's ever going to retain his seat not necessarily but I don't think that he necessarily merits it any less or more than a complete outsider who either hasn't been in the sport before or has been far removed from the sport for a couple of years it's just kind of the way that F1 works either fortunately or unfortunately depending on who you are and I would argue as well, like, um, F1 is so much of a business that you're always looking at who the best person is that you can get in. But if you if they were to get rid of Nikki, that that's taking away a known quantity in the Williams team for two unknown quantities. And you know, what? I'm just gonna bring this up as well. The fact that F2 is not happening right now and we have no idea it, it takes all of the f2 drivers out of the equation because you don't really know yeah. who's going to be available to be jumping up so williams op options are already limited 
I am still going to argue that Nicky deserves his seat because I think that Williams has been struggling and he was there. I mean, obviously, he got his seat as a result of money. But he was there to jump into that seat and offer his assistance when Williams needed it the most. And I think the least that Williams can then do, because we have been seeing this improvement and Nicky has been loyal to the team, we can see him do at least one more year in the new regulations. See how it works out. If it doesn't work out, then that's the end. But I think he deserves at least one more year when Williams have a fighting chance at being higher up on the grid because he's done all of these performances from the back of the grid. And I think he deserves the opportunity if Williams end up being a, at least a midfield team, he deserves the opportunity to show what he can do in better machinery. Hmm. I do just want to make a point though with when he actually got his seat, he came up after the 2019 F2 Championship, which was after Nick de Vries won. And obviously, Williams had ties with Mercedes, and Toto Wolff was trying to get that seat for Nick de Vries. But because Nicholas Latifi came along with more money, that then warranted Nick de Vries to not get the seat. So, Steph, I hope you're happy. Well, the thing is, <laughs> at the time, and that's how Formula One works. Like, I can't be mad about it because. But they could have then had. I'd spend two my talents. whole time. I'd spend my whole life being mad at Formula One for choosing money over talent. Well, and I can't. I, I don't have the life. amount of energy to give to Formula One to be angry at them all the time. Don't want to hear you. Don't want to hear you talking about Nick DeFries not being in Formula One ever again, because that was a reason. Thank you. Bye bye. Shut I think he's pretty reason. happy with his world championship though. So, mm, but I, I think, think he was he's happy. Just Would okay. he be a world champion in Formula One? Maybe. Getful. Might have been in Mercedes no, by now. Currently, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, exactly. This has derailed. Okay. Charlotte, before before we get into a full-blown argument. Does anyone else have any major points that they want to make before we see if there has been a U-turn? No. Um, Latifi yeah, is king. Say... Canadian king. Yes. Also, Nutella, give that man a sponsorship. <laughs> Ready for yeah. U-turns. Okay, so I'm gonna go round and I'm gonna see what you still think. Whether you think Nicholas Latifi deserves his seat or not. Dawny, do you still agree that he, do you still disagree that he deserves a seat? Why did we come to me first? Because I knew that you'd you would be like this, so I thought I'd choose you. <laughs> uh oh, I'm so conflicted because deserves is such a like strong word. And I feel like a lot of the points that Steph and Cass had made are good reasons like good logical sensible business reasons for why he should keep his seat but they've not made the point that Nicholas Satifi is an amazing overtaker he's late on the brakes they've not made the point that <laughs> George well... Russell has overtaken enough people <laughs> <laughs> They've not made the point that he is amazing red one lap in qualifying or that he can defend like Nando. So To be fair, not many people can. No, yeah. not not yet. Sure. To be fair, not many people can. Um <laughs> so I was I was a bit on the fence there and I almost was gonna make a U turn, but I've talked myself out of it. No, he doesn't deserve a seat. <laughs> I just saw, I just saw her mind ticking, like, what is she going to say? <laughs> okay, Kira, I would disagree camp, what are you saying? So as you know, girlies, I was on the disagree camp, but after listening to the thoughts of Steph and Cassidy, I am betraying the disagree camp, and I am heading over to the agree camp, and I'm making a U-turn. Yeah, baby. Maybe I've tricked you all the whole video. Who knows? <laughs> Joking. I think Nicholas Tiffy does deserve it. I mean, I we needed one, so. <laughs> I know. I can't wait to see him at the Canadian Grand Prix next year. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna guess that Cass is still in the agree camp. That's my boy. <laughs> I gotta support my own kind. We're limited out here. <laughs> okay, Steph. Yeah, one hundred percent agree. Also, I'm just gonna bring up. A f the, sorry, I should have done this in my arguing point before, but just like Lance Stroll started his career in the Williams, and and he did, he's done a great job for himself, hasn't he? That's yeah, it. but with Lance, Canadian, I mean, he's, Canadians in he's, a Williams. They he's were. still is still technically a pay driver and he still is inconsistent but you know it's fine I'm but once again we wouldn't have racing point aka aston martin without him so meh. without lawrence not lance uh, lawrence. well mm, yeah it's not lance. Lance. he's no. only there because of lance <laughs> anyway <laughs> um so i'm actually still in a disagree i mean i love nikki as a person but his results and 
I just don't think that he, I don't know. I just, I just, on track, I just feel meh about him. If I was to write down 20 drivers, I'd probably forget him in my list as well as the Haas guys, apart from Mick. Uh, so yeah, that's how I feel. But we made a U-turn, Kira made the U-turn. So that means that the Steph and Cass have won. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Um, make sure you like, comment below if you think Nicholas Satifi deserves his F1 at sea. And make sure you're subscribed and we'll see you next week for another F-Series Friday. Thanks, Cass. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Cass.